Smart snowblower shoppers are thinking of this. Hey guys and gals, welcome to Garage Gear. I'm JB, giving you the best tips and tricks to survive life in and out of the garage. Tip number one, before buying a two-stage snowblower, you need to know how much snow your area gets. This can heavily influence your buying decisions. Now you may already have a good idea of how much snow your area gets, but if you don't, you can find this out by going on Google and typing in the city in which you live. From there, you can get an average of how much snow comes down in your local area. And if you're getting well over 50 inches of snow per year, you need to consider buying a two-stage snowblower. Those little single single-stage snowblowers aren't gonna hack it at the end of your driveway if the snow starts piling up. And if your air is receiving even closer to that 100-inch mark, then you may want to even go for an even bigger snowblower. And to help this video go bigger with the YouTube algorithm, would you mind hitting that like button down below? Thank you very much. This segues nicely into tip number two. Don't under buy. They'll regret it. Oh, they totally will. And I've seen this happen many, many times. Now I get it, you may be on a budget, but if you can pump just a few more bucks into this purchase, it could be well worth it. And you'll spend less time out in the cold. Let me explain. Now growing up, we had a 24 inch snowblower, nothing monstrous, but a good machine. I plowed the neighbor's driveways every time it snowed. And after many seasons of plowing all my neighbor's driveways, one of my neighbors came to me and said, hey, you don't gotta plow my driveway anymore. I bought a new snowblower. I was like, okay, cool. That winter, we got hammered with feet of snow during one single storm. I went out that morning to plow our driveway and I look over to see my neighbor pushing the smallest single stage snowblower I have ever seen. I went out, plowed two other driveways, came back and she wasn't even halfway done with hers. And you could just see it, she looked physically exhausted. I went over and helped her out and that was probably the first and last time that that snowblower ever ran. If you spend a little bit more money up front and buy the right snowblower for your needs, you'll be done quicker, you'll be more efficient at moving snow, and you won't be working harder than an ugly stripper. Plus you may see more of that money come back to you down the road when you go to sell the unit. The next thing you need to consider is your driveway size. If you have a smaller driveway, then you could probably get away with a smaller snowblower. But if you have a wider or longer driveway, then you'll probably wanna go with a snowblower that's a little bit wider or one with a more powerful engine so you can throw the snow farther. Also, think about your sidewalks and your walkways. If these are pretty long too, a bigger snowblower can help. I really hate shoveling all this. If your sidewalks or walkways are narrower, then maybe a smaller snowblower could benefit you so you can navigate them a little bit easier. Also, consider what your driveway is made of. Is it made of concrete? Asphalt? If so, then you'll most likely want to go with a snowblower with rubber tires. But if your driveway has a very unlevel surface or is made of crushed stone, then you'll probably want to go with some kind of track model. A snowblower with tracks in this case can make life a lot easier for you. And speaking of making things easy, simple designs can make easy work of a big job ahead of you. In my experience, you can never go wrong with things like a simple crank style chute or manual deflectors. The minute you start adding on cables, additional engine features, batteries to run extra gadgets, and so on, you start to see more problems. More money, more problems. Good song. I do think these features are cool and potentially have their perks, but if you're buying your first snowblower, I recommend keeping it simple. Smart snowblower shoppers are thinking of this. Auger housing to impeller ratios. Let's get nerdy here for a second. First up, these are augers. This is an impeller. If you take a wide snowblower that can inhale all this snow, but you put a tiny impeller behind it, it's going to take your snowblower longer to process all that snow and throw it out. But on the flip side, if you have a larger impeller behind your augers, then your machine can operate a lot quicker and probably won't clog up as much. Think of it like drinking through a straw. If you have a narrower straw, you can only take in so much, but if you have a wider straw, you can drink a lot more. Now let's do some fairly simple math here. If you have a 14 inch impeller and you have a 24 inch auger housing, 14 divided by 24 is 0.58 or 58%. That's a high percentage and a unit with those kinds of numbers can really send some snow. But now let's say you have a 36 inch wide auger housing and only a 12 inch impeller. Well, 12 divided by 36 only comes out to 0.33 or 33%. And a machine like that, Although it's big, it will still take more time to process all that snow. Now here's something that every snowblower buyer should be conscious of, but many snowblower companies are not anymore, unfortunately. Durability. Many companies are going cheaper and cheaper and cheaper with their materials and components. It's like a race to the bottom. Some machines nowadays are built so poorly. Plastic overload. <laughs> I know. When you're pushing a heavy snowblower around that's throwing heavy snow and ice, plastic parts on high-use components is just 
asking for trouble. Highly used plastic parts are just destined to crack. And in my experience, I would avoid these like the plague. I will say this, some companies like Craftsman here have actually gone back to metal chutes, which is a nice step in the durability direction. And some snowblowers today are made of really, really thin metal, and they may either arrive bent, or you could possibly bend them with your own hands. Seriously, the quality controls on some of these brands just isn't there anymore. In my experience and all my observations looking at all the different snowblower brands, the better brands are gonna be building their snowblowers out of thicker metal and better components. Here's a little tip. Next time you're at Home Depot or Lowe's, go over to the snowblowers and try flexing the side panels with your bare hands. If it flexes even just a little bit, I would be strongly concerned about being behind that snowblower as you ram it into a snowbank of hard pack snow. Then try this on a snowblower that's maybe a better brand and you'll see that those panels don't really move. They're just built a bit better and this also goes for things like augers and gearboxes too. Thicker ones tend to be built better and hold up longer. You can see here that the augers and auger shafts are tiny compared to this snowblower. If you were to accidentally hit something hard like a tree branch or a rock that was maybe buried under the snow, which do you think would survive? Now here's a bonus tip or more of a bonus observation and I'm guilty of this too. Next time you go to Lowe's or Home Depot and you see a brand new snowblower, watch to see what other people are doing. I guarantee the very first thing that somebody's gonna do is play with the shoe control. Every single time I go to one of those stores, I see somebody playing with the shoe. It's like it's built in our instinctive nature to play with it. For more cool garage gear content, click or tap the screen right here. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the garage.